You might be wondering, what the heck will I actually coach on and what skills can I actually package into a coaching business? With this video, I'm gonna be talking about the corporate skills that you can easily package into a coaching business if you so desire. And if you're watching this video, I bet that you do. So with that, let's get into it. Hey, hey, Courtney Sanders here. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new to me, I'm a full-time seven-figure certified life and business coach as well as wife and mom. I wear all the hats and do all the things. And lately, I've been helping corporate professionals transition into the coaching business of their dreams. And so if that's you, you might be wondering, what the heck will I actually coach on and what skills can I actually package into a coaching business? And so I know for a lot of my corporate professionals, you feel very much like, Oh, you know, I just work this nine to five job and all I do is deal with these TPS reports. Shout out to those of you who remember the Office Space, the movie, right? Before Office Space, the uh, TV series came out and those daggone TPS reports. And so if you're wondering, you know, what do I actually have that's a value that I can offer? You would be shocked, especially if you are a high level corporate professional, if you work in management, if you have any type of leadership role whatsoever, I think you're selling yourself short. I think you have a lot more to offer than you think you do. And so with this this video, I'm going to be talking about the corporate skills that you can easily package into a coaching business if you so desire. And if you're watching this video, I bet that you do. So with that, let's get into it. All right. So the first skill that you have as a corporate professional, especially if you are in any type of leadership or management role, is that of managing others. Yes. Managing other people. Managing others requires team building. It requires um, emotional intelligence. It requires great communication. And you can transfer those skills into a variety of different coaching arenas is even if you don't want to do something in the business realm. I think one of the biggest misconceptions people have when they are building their coaching business and particularly when they're choosing their niche is they believe that they have to choose a niche that is exactly the niche that they are in presently or exactly the niche where they got the skills from. But that's not the case. Maybe you don't want to coach on anything related to corporate America. You don't want to coach on anything related to business. Well, that doesn't mean that you cannot transfer those business skills. In fact, I often think about many experts in uh, law enforcement and the military. There's a lot of, um, great negotiators who have done like hostage negotiations. And again, they have done that in like a, a law enforcement or military aspect. But oftentimes when they leave their law enforcement or military career, they will often work in business or some other arena because those negotiation skills are transferable or those high stakes communication skills are transferable. And so it's the same thing for you. Maybe you've learned a variety of different uh, tactics and methods for, you know, getting the best out of others, for communicating effectively and for achieving particular outcomes when you have to work with a team you don't have to just you know coach that in corporate America you can coach that maybe in education you can coach that to parents maybe you can help parents communicate better with their teenagers right that's a perennial frustration that a lot of parents have I haven't reached that yet my kids are small but I imagine that I'll get there again you can take the same communication skills the same emotional intelligence skills and team building skills that you have mastered in corporate America and you can put them to work in a variety of arenas that a lot of people would be willing to pay you for. And speaking of high stakes negotiation, if you have done any type of negotiating in your corporate field or you have developed that skill, that is going to be hugely, hugely valuable. You could offer that in the form of business coaching for up and coming entrepreneurs. You can offer that for other people in a career context. You could even offer that in relationships, right? You can help um, people who are in, you know, struggling relationships, maybe manage their relationships a lot better by learning how to negotiate their needs, right? Maybe you are helping failing marriages communicate better by learning the art of tactful negotiation or win-win negotiation where everyone is getting their needs met. Again, you're like, well, you know, how could I possibly do that if I did this in corporate America? Again, it's understanding which skills are transferable, learning how to put them in a coaching context and then coaching in the arena that you so choose. And so if you're wondering how you put that in a coaching context, that's actually what I teach in my coaching program, The Next Big Name Coach, which is a program that will help you become not only a certified coach, but we provide you with an accredited coaching certification and we show you how to come up with your own coaching methodology based on your unique story and your unique skills. So if that is something that is of interest to you, you can click the link to learn more about it and apply. And if accepted, you'll be invited to a call with my enrollment coordinators who will walk you through the entire process. But yeah, if you've done any form of negotiating, you can do this in a variety of contexts. And there are a lot of people in and outside of business who would pay you a lot of money to help them negotiate. 
All right, the next corporate skill that I know you probably have that is way more valuable than you realize is that of strategic planning. Yes, I know many of you are working for Fortune 500 or even Fortune 100 companies and you are doing all of this goal setting and strategic planning in your particular departments, not just for the, for the month or for the quarter, for the year, or maybe even for multiple years out. Again, this is an example of a transferable skill that doesn't just have to be done in corporate America. If you do strategic planning, maybe there are nonprofits that would like for you to help them do strategic planning and their fundraising efforts. Again, maybe there are teachers or people in the field of education that would like you to do strategic planning. Um, maybe there are just people in their personal lives who are trying to achieve a variety of goals who would love to hire you as a life coach to take those strategic planning skills and help them apply it to their personal lives so that they can achieve their goals, whether it's going back to school or you know hitting a particular health outcome. Maybe they want to run a, a marathon or they want to do something amazing. They want to write a book, etc. They would love to hire you and use your strategic planning skills in order to help them achieve their goals. All right, I have more where that came from, but first I wanna hear from you. What corporate skills have you mastered? Share in the comments below. All right, the next corporate skill that you probably have is that of innovation. Yes, companies cannot grow and be successful if they don't have employees that are constantly helping them innovate. And so maybe you are on a marketing team or a product development team, and you have tried and true practices and principles that you use in order to be creative and to come up with new innovative initiatives inside of the company. Well, guess what? There are a lot of people who would love to pay you to help them with that. Maybe it's up and coming entrepreneurs who are just getting started and they can't figure out how to stand out in their niche, they would love to pay you to learn those innovative principles so that they can innovate in their industry. Maybe there are people who are looking for their dream spouse or their dream partner who would love to hire you in a relationship context because you can use those creativity and innovation skills to help them stand out in the dating market. Again, this is an example of how we can take skills in one arena and really transfer them elsewhere. Maybe there are teachers or people in the field of education who would love to hire you to leverage your innovation skills so that they can better reach the youth that they are looking to work with. Or maybe there are uh, students who are neurodivergent or have different ways of learning and they would love to hire you and for you to help them be innovative in how they even approach the field of education. Again, the sky is the limit. We gotta be creative. And if you're in the innovation team at your job, you're a creative person. Think about all the different ways that you can use that creativity in a coaching practice to help people in a variety of arenas. All right, the next corporate skill that you've probably mastered, especially if you were in the field of leadership, is that of executive presence. Now, a lot of people don't even realize that they have this, but if you are consistently giving presentations to the board, if you've been promoted recently, if you often have to interact with outside vendors or outside stakeholders and your boss is always putting you up to that because you do a good job of entertaining them, of you know taking them out on the company dime and really uh, selling the products and services that the company offers, that means that you have some level of executive presence. And so executive presence is kind of this intangible quality that really is the confidence that you carry in the way that you show up and carry yourself. And so there are a lot of people who would love to have executive presence, even if they're not using it in a business context. Again, in dating relationships, you can see the obvious, you know, uh, carryover with that. You could transfer that to the relationship standpoint, how to use executive presence that you use in the boardroom, how to do that in a relationship context. But you can also help maybe um, grad students who are looking to get into their uh, first uh, field that they have been studying so long for, how to have executive presence so that they can land those lucrative jobs. Um, you can help people have executive presence, again, in the field of education, in nonprofits, volunteering, right? Um, maybe people who just need help with communication, maybe people who are shy and deal with introversion, and you're gonna help them be more confident in whatever arena or field that they do. Um, I remember I had someone in my audience who told me that they did executive presence for aspiring pageant women. Winners, right? Women who are entering different um, pageants and needed to show up confidently in uh, their pageant events, right? So again, executive presence and that confidence that you develop from executive presence is really transferable. You can use this in a variety of arenas. All right, the last corporate skill that you might not have even thought of, in fact, you might not have even considered this as a skill, but that is if you represent a minority in any type of majority dominated field, right? So I'm not just talking about, you know, race or ethnicity, though that certainly counts, 
But if you are a woman who, you know, is operating in maybe a male dominated field or maybe your age, right? Maybe you're a young person who is in a field where everybody is decades older than you, or maybe you're someone who's a bit seasoned in life and you're in a field that is very popular with young people yet, yet you're being very successful at your age. This is what I'm saying. If you kind of represent any type of underdog demographic in your particular field at work, that also transfers and you can really take the skills that you have mastered in navigating that. It can be very difficult to be, you know, a woman in a male dominated field. What skills have you mastered in order to be successful? It can be difficult be being very young, you know, in a field where everybody is, you know, much older than you and, you know, you want them to take you seriously. What are the things that you have done to really make sure that you are successful? What are those skills? You can package that up and you can transfer them into a different arena and help people be successful where they are the underdogs in their particular situation. So don't sleep on that. Again, I know that's not something that a lot of people think of, but if you find yourself in that position and you've been successful at it at work, that means you've developed some skills that other people would gladly pay you for. All right, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoy this. And this is making you think differently about all the skills that you can package into a coaching business. And if you're now like, you know what? I really can do this. And you're very serious about getting your coaching business started right away. Again, I invite you to apply to my program, The Next Big Name Coach, where you can not only earn an accredited coaching certification, but we will show you how to get your business launched, how to stand it up, how to come up with all the websites and content and all the different things that you need in order to be the next big name in your industry. Go ahead and click the link below in order to apply. And again, if accepted, you'll be invited to an enrollment call with my team who will walk you through the entire process. All right, thanks so much for watching this video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And if you can't wait for my next YouTube video, make sure you're following me on both TikTok and Instagram. It's Courtney L. Sanders on both. And with that, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.